Hello everyone. So you're welcome to Python and Cras first meetup for the year. My name is El Carisa Siedu. I'm a software engineer at Zuberi. And I co-lead Pi Accra with Jerry Boaba, who is a software engineer at M Pharma. Later on in the session, he will give us a brief overview of Python Accra and our future plans for you. So today we will have Kwame Ikwama Boateng, who will be sharing with us about his journey as a software engineer. We realize how important it is to hear about other stories because we can sometimes relate to it and hear from them. And then sometimes we can learn lessons from it as well. So Jerry, can you come and give a brief introduction of Pi Accra and what our goals are and what we have in store for the community? Yes, that's that's fine, Alcaris. So um I, I think everyone here, it's here because they are pretty much familiar with um, Python Ghana or communities in general, or would like to take part in this whole like community um, based event, right? So I think um, Python Accra is a user group under Python Ghana, where we sort of like to um, come together as a team or as a community and go share thoughts, share ideas, share anything that can help with personal or professional growth, and then basically help advance our, our careers or our learnings or our personal journeys, right? So um, Python Accra it's actually has been around for quite some time, just that this time it's um, El Caris and I that are leading this user group. And as, as such, we have quite a lot of things planned for this particular community. Some of them are this event, have plans for other events coming in the future. We have plans to make so much more partnerships with other companies so we can have professionals from other companies come join us, tell us about their journey, tell us about their own stories, and also have in-person in events, right? So we'd have sprint planning, so you'd have hackathons, you'd have so many things, build sessions, all of those things. So I guess if everyone is here, they'd basically be um, looking out for um, information from us about um, our new events. And since we have you on board, we can easily reach, reach out to you guys with any new developments that will be coming up soon. So um, without much ado, I'd like to introduce our speaker is going to be Kwame. And Kwame has quite a lot of things in store for us to learn from because he has a very exciting journey. And I'd like all of us to pay attention to the things Kwame has to share with us. And please feel free to leave any question at any point in time. You would note them down in when we do reach that period where we um, answer questions. I definitely have um, Kwame or any other panelist answer the question he may have um, have written down, right? So yeah, um, I think uh, that's that's everything for now. We we'll definitely um, cycle back on this particular topic, but I think now is the time to have our speaker tell us about his journey. Yeah, right. Hello. Um, Hello, Kwame. Hi. Um, good evening. Um, thank you guys for being here. Uh, I can see a couple of you guys around. Um, I'm really grateful that you made time to come here to listen to me um, talk about my journey so far. Um, so I think we'll basically get right into it. I don't have my time, and it's quite a long journey. So. Um, to make things quite easier, I think I'll, I'll, I'll try and divide my journey into two parts. I'm um, sorry, into like four chapters. So I call the first part the stumbling, which will basically um, talk about how I got into programming in the first place, like how I found software engineering and all that. So at first, I did biological science. So I did biological science in school. Um, I wanted to do medicine. And then I didn't get it. I'm glad I didn't get it from changing to my site. So I started doing biological science. Um, I was much fascinated about the human processes. So 
That was the reason I did biological science, bro. And I realized that we're doing much of plants and insects, and I wasn't really interested in that. Um, third year, I was already, I'd already lost interest in the course. And we had to do a lot of lab. I remember most of our attachments were involved, involved a lot of labs, and I wasn't interested in labs. I I hated labs that much that during my, I didn't do any attachments and during my whole thesis, I basically did, I told my team members to do the labs and I'll basically write the whole thing. So I did the theory part and they did the practical. So I basically never went to the lab, did nothing about the lab. So just during that process, I knew in third year that after school, there was no way I was going to continue this, uh, pursue this course or anything in regards to it. So third year, I started exploring, learning a lot of things outside. Um, after school, we did um, national service. So I got posted to Food and Drugs Authority. So that was 2018. So 2018, and then we were doing, um, where we had to write um, the year in review. So basically, we would take the um, performance review. We do a performance review. So you put together everything you have you have for the year, the facilities you have inspected, the facilities you have certified, all of that. You so we had everything kind of like recorded physically. So I had we had a physical book that we had to go through. And if you can see me, I kind of have like four eyes. So going through as much finicky as I am, going through like a list of stuff, it it, it, it wasn't something I, I wanted to do. So I think after that, I told my boss, there's no way I'm doing this again. So we have to find a better way. So during the Christmas, I think when we went for the break, I tried to learn Excel so that I can basically move everything we have in the spreadsheet. So we're about to start a new year, 2019. So 2019, I moved everything we had. So any record we had, anything that was coming in, we recorded in a book. And I also did one for Excel sheet that recorded things in. So it started as a database. And then I basically baked the KPIs that we had for we used to do our reviews and stuff, reports and stuff, and our reports. So I basically took those KPIs, which is key performance indicators, and I built a dashboard. It was just me Googling things in Excel and then just fig fig figuring things out as I move along. I built a dashboard around it. So that was basically how it started. It was just Excel dashboard I was just trying to build. And then I got a database and I realized mm, I can make this, I can automate this. So we had, I basically wanted to automate a lot of the algorithmic activities we did. So most of the main mundane activities were just basic input and there's a specific output. So if I can automate that part, then we can free up time to do more heuristic tasks. So mostly I, after I built that, I think I figured out we had this thing where we do reports. So we write um, reports after expecting a facility. So we had to get kind of like a, uh, um, they were just the same templates with just different variables. So like a facility name, the day we inspected, the address the facility, those were the only things we are changing. So I had a database, I had this, how do I figure that out? So I knew it could be done. I didn't know how it was going to be done, but I knew it could be done. So I just Googled and checked, figured out things. And I found about meal merge. Is it this weird thing that people use to for like their weddings? They can just send like bulk mail to people. So I used that and I tuned into our purpose and I did it. So it was just, that was basically it. Like I built this thing and I was trying to build up on it. And I was trying to build every day. I was trying to figure out how do I make this better? How do I make this better? So I was building, building, and then I started figuring, I, I don't know if I had reached the limit of Excel, but I was looking for more ways to automate. And the more I search and I research, the more Python kept coming up. So that was basically how I stumbled on Python. So it was like, okay, this thing can be used to do this that I want to do. Okay, great, then let me learn it. So it was 2019, let me learn it. So I think during that time, I didn't have a personal laptop then. Um, just context, this is not a grass to gray story. Uh, the reason I didn't have a personal laptop had nothing to do with me being broke or anything. I have been very privileged in my life. 
I'm giving you this much context because I want you to understand that some of the decisions I made, I could make them because I had that privileges so that you can use to gauge your own. You can basically do the things I, I did. So I started on my, I told my friend about it, um, Ethanom. Ethanom basically told me, okay, oh, there's this absolute link that you can download on your phone and you can start learning Python and programming and all that. So I downloaded solo then and then I started. And then I think a month or two later, I got uh, my personal laptop and I started. So it was just during that time. And because of the things I was building, I had the opportunity to be basically, um, I had that my bosses were moving me into meetings that um, were specialized. So they used to come and pick me up for brainstorming and all that. So it was just, I had a privilege to see the things they needed. So I wanted to learn this thing to build this stuff. So that was it. During that time, I had no idea. I didn't think I was going to be a software engineer. It was just a tool that I had, I found that I could use to solve a problem and I was learning about it. So I will, I think I should revisit to build it. I never got around to build that, um, that product. I should revisit someday. Well, yeah, so in 2019, we finished Genesis. A lot of people were surprised I didn't like drop my CV. I had, I never intended on working there, but because of how the things I was doing, they were assuming that I was, it was just because I wanted to work there. So we just left. So 2019, 2020, my boss got called me and wanted me to um, basically come around to the mall. I didn't really want to work there. It was, uh, it, there were a lot of red tapes. The bureaucracy, like to get things done, was was a hassle. So I I didn't want to be uh, involved in those stuff. So I just left. So twenty twenty, after doing the COVID year, basically twenty twenty early twenty before COVID and stuff, I took a gap year. I said I was I was staying with my sister, so I didn't have to worry about a lot of stuff, rent, food, that kind of thing. I was staying with family, so I had that privilege to take that gap year. So I took a copy and that was, so that was where, which comes to my next phase, the lesser God. That was when I basically started learning programming. But so it was just at home. At that moment, though, I didn't know, I wasn't sure I was going to do programming. So I'm um, software engineering. So I was basically exploring a lot of things. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And people kept telling me, you're done with it. And I said, go do masters and stuff. I don't know what I want to do. What exactly am I going to master on, right? So you're just trying to figure out things. So you're exploring, learning, and just a lesson when you're unsure, just accumulate knowledge, right? So I have built a new, I think I had followed it to and built something with Jump or Python. And I thought, yeah, I was, I knew everything. I didn't. I didn't even know I, I knew nothing. I, that's the thing about scarce knowledge though. When, when you have scarce knowledge, it gives you this pseudo confidence that makes you think you know everything because you don't even know the things you don't know about. So I was so confident like I knew and I started a new project on my own and I couldn't even start the like the Django project. How the command to start a Django project I didn't even know. I had to go back to the video tutorials and basically reference. So I was, that was just then during that time, I was like waking up at dawn every day, like five o'clock. And then I'll just be sitting on my desk, just letting and my sister mostly comes to my room. Like every morning when he wakes up, she mostly comes to check up on me. So anytime she comes, I'm just sitting there, just on my laptop and everything. So eventually she started calling me a lesser god because I was just sitting there like an idol. like. Those who understand she as a person. So basically, that was how she was looked at me. So I was just doing that phase. Um, it was a lot of, it was a really hard time. You know, when you are trying to figure out things, you don't know what you want to do. So you, at one point, you don't even know your purpose, what you want to do. So that's one part you're trying to figure out. And then the other part is you are trying to learn a lot of this stuff that. Sometimes they are confusing and sometimes you get tired. You get bent out sometimes, you just rest. I'll, I'll get out of it 
so when whilst you're learning, I get a lot of people reaching out to me, and then like sometimes I like I don't I'm not always learning. It's like I used to get out of it like for like a week out of it, and then I revisit back. But the most important thing is I was just going back. So I think during mid 2020, that was when I realized <laughs> this is where I wanted to solve this thing. Like because the more I did, that is where I really found my joy in. Oh, of, of all the things I was exploring, it was software engineering. So I, I just told my brother, I had land for the Jerry, but I wasn't really interested anymore. I'm just going to scratch it and I'm just going to focus on um, software engineering. So don't waste your money. So I started just focusing on software engineering and I understood a lot of people have gone to school, they did their own computer science, studying for four years. And they are now they are coming to this um, industry, and I'm trying to get into this industry. I had no computer science degree, I had no background, so how do I? I understood that I had to work twice as hard as other people because I had to find a way to show people I don't have any degree, I don't have this, but I can do this. So how do I do that? So it was just how to build, how to build projects, kind of build a portfolio. So I was just basically building stuff. And the thing about when you're building stuff, break when you when you're learning, break a lot of stuff. Like don't be too worried about you. I think uh, there's this thing where people are so worried about errors and stuff. Break a lot of stuff. Like if I'm going, I'm watching a tutorial and some like the person did this and that. I'll in terms of okay, so what if I omit this? What if I take this off? I broke a lot of stuff during my learning phase and I saw a lot of errors. I think that is what it has really helped me in the bargain because I can now see an error and just know what's going on because I broke a lot of stuff. Like I was just basically, I'll comment this out. I'll do this. Okay, this happens. Okay. So, and read your errors. I'm saying this because I used to not read my errors. When you get an error, just read them. You They basically tell you what is happening. Line 203, this is where it's broke. But the thing about errors, sometimes people, you see an error and just go straight to the code to see what is wrong with my code. Understanding the errors of your language is important. Knowing what value error is, what type error is, or understanding all this stuff is very important. It gives you a context of what exactly is going on, what you might be doing wrong. So during my learning phase, it was just me basically learning a lot of stuff. And I had a lot of, I had um, Kofi, Fabrizio, one of uh, my friend, um, basically my childhood friend. We've been like from crutch to, and interestingly, I'm, I'm working with him right now at M Pharma and we're in the same team. So it, it was basically him, me just learning about um, me and him. He was the one person that uh, had the experience in terms of social engineering. So he was basically teaching me stuff and he was basically letting me know, okay, these are some of the things I did. So he started the experiences he had, the things he did that it didn't work or it couldn't work. He told me, okay, I did this stuff and did that. Don't do this stuff. So that was my one, like someone who also had helped me. He wasn't really a Python there, so it was hard getting back to him in terms of if I was struggling something Python or something, but most likely he mostly he, he had been doing it a while to understand how to do stuff so he could go and then give me a solution and yeah but he was really helpful and coffee will come in uh, will, will be a recurring theme during the whole thing this journey so coffee basically just told me focus on one thing focus on one stack at that moment i didn't know uh, what i had okay so now i was like first i didn't know i wanted to be in social engineering now i knew I want to be in social engineering, but I didn't know what part of social engineering I wanted to be, right? I didn't even know about, I, I found out about front end and back end in like on M Pharma. The first time I found out about front end and back end was on M Pharma's website. So I was so intrigued about M Pharma because when I was working at LBA, they were the, one of the companies I knew about that had, it was the kind of like they went to tech and they went to, so when I figured that I could get into tech and this, they were basically like the amalgamation of both biological science and tech. So I had each of my experiences could come in play 
in terms of if I worked at M Pharma. So I took um, M Pharma and I was like, okay, great. Um, I'm going to, I want to work at this place. Like, so back during that time, I was like, I want to work at this place, but I'll check their LinkedIn and everyone that was working there was had like three years experience, like four years. They were all basically like all senior engineers. So I was like, yeah, I, I think I have to go somewhere. So the plan was to go, get a job somewhere, work for like one, two years, and then I'll try my luck there. But yeah, I just, so the first time I found I found out about front end and back end at M Pharma website, I basically called Kofi. I was like, I'd read about it. I read about it online, but it didn't really make sense. So I would call Kofi, I was like, what is exactly this front end and back end? Kofi gave me all the tips, like what it is and all that. Right. So 2020 learning, I was in checking out AI, I was checking out machine learning, I was checking out back end. I remember when I started building the project and I realized I'd built my views, I'd built my models, how to show it on templates with Django. And then I realized I didn't know HTML and CSS. I actually had no idea because the first time I built a project that I thought I had built, I, I just, the, the story of the guy just gave us HTML and CSS. I just downloaded it and then I used it. So now I, how do I, so I basically jumped on free code camp and I had to learn HTML and CSS. So that was, uh, I think one of my projects, 100 days ago, you can see some, a couple of my projects where I did the front end. I, I, I am a big good bit front end. I, 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 I don't like CSS though, but maybe I should revisit it. I, I did pretty well. So I was just trying to see maybe sometime, but yeah, it was just, it was that back and forth trying to figure out, but I wanted to focus more on back end. After a while, I realized, okay, I was interested in back end. So 2020, I was just, the late part of 2020, I was just learning. 2021, 2020 December, I got a call from, so 2020, I wasn't applying for jobs. So that was when I was trying to learn the gap year. And 2020 December, I got a call from um, some, a company that we're interviewing for, um, we're interviewing. I've not, I've not sent any CV out, so I was surprised when they called me. So they called me and said I uh, interviewed. I'm um, so okay, I'll be coming. And I asked, oh, what is that? Is the interview about? They said, oh, but you, you applied for the job. So yeah, I applied. I just have applied for a lot of people. I don't remember. I had, I hadn't applied to the company or any place, but. They just, we went there, we did an interview. It was, it wasn't related to software engineering, it was inventory. I became an inventory controller at um, Coca-Cola. So it was basically at their warehouse, which working there. So during that time, it was just trying to bid my time so I can actually get into software engineering because I, really, I had to do something. Whilst I wait, get some job and all that. So I was working there, but it was a stressful schedule. It was like six to six. We were going for like six to six morning, evening. And then you wait, you go like the next days. Kofi sent me, Kofi sent me a, um, someone's um, report, um, someone's um, kind of, they have put on their forehead that they wanted a mid-level Django developer. So that was where I applied quickly. So I got, a response for him, we booked an appointment and then we had a meeting. So we had an interview, it was just initially 50 down. So he, he really he taught me a lot of stuff. He was a, he's a, um, what's this company of, um, of Andela developer. So yeah, one of the senior developers there. So basically he wanted an intern for a job. He didn't want an intern actually, he wanted a mid-level developer. So, and me, I didn't even, I, I, I don't even have junior engineer experience. And that was the, like, it was the issue. I was, when you're applying to other companies, no one really wanted to, was getting by because I didn't have any experience. So it was just me trying to get any experiences I want. Like, just get any experience, I don't care. I just want some experience, right? So I go there and we have this, we had a, we have our interview. We talk and he's like, okay, 
he starts, he asks me a couple of algorithm questions. I answer, he asks me a lot, a couple of problems and then I solve them. And then he starts asking me that mid-level thing, like what is a middle web? What is this? What is that? I had no idea what he was talking about. So I basically told him I didn't know them yet. So he listened and was like, okay. But then after the interview, I don't know, I think it, I, I impressed him with my problem solving skills. So it was like, I didn't reach the level he wanted, but he wanted to basically, he saw a potential. So he wanted to um, at least be part of my journey with me. So if nothing, he wants to take me out um, up as an intern. So that was, that was one of the best days of my life when I got that internship. Because for it just felt like this is the breakthrough. Like once I got this, I knew I had like something. It, it, it was like it could get it gets better from here. So I just had that. I was so hungry. I remember like we start when we start when he was giving me tasks, right? So he gave me a task today. Two hours later, I'm done. I send it back to him. I do tests like as quickly as possible. I was really hungry. Like it's be, I wanted this work and it was just me. That was when I didn't know a lot of stuff. That was where I learned about API development and all that. I didn't know about API. I didn't know what API didn't really make sense to me. I didn't even know that Django, the template engine I've been used in Jinja and all that is based on APIs. I didn't know. So API was just something that didn't ever make sense, but when I started working over there, a lot of stuff made sense. Like I realized a lot of loopholes in my knowledge. I learned a lot of stuff. So I learned API development, which was really great because it basically was what helped me in my um, interview with Enforma. So let's go to Enforma. So we go to the breakthrough, which is the third part of my journey. So after this, I I used to work with I realized this I, this is what I where like I was working but when I did projects when I worked on software development job API when I was doing the internship um task that was when I felt most happy so I was like nah I had to leave this place so I started applying for jobs so M Pharma wasn't part of mine because uh, for me it was like this book will be only employed so senior software engineers. So you let me go and rack up some experience somewhere and I'll I'll come back to them. They shouldn't worry, I'll come back. Um, I remember I reached out to PC Dapsin on Twitter. He was one of the people who I ever got a response from. And he told me, he gave me some tips on some of the things I needed to learn as a backend engineer. So that was something I also started learning. And then um Dev Congress. That was a really good turning point in my life, 2021 Dev Congress. So we have this Dev Congress, which I met my boss over there. And I was having, I had gone to delete a migration file. Uh, if, if you're a Python Django developer, please never delete a migration file. Okay, so just, just word of caution. So I met, I went for Dev Congress. Um, that was when I realized the Congress was actually localized. I think a few days to the event, that was when I realized it was a Ghanaian thing. I didn't know. So I went to the Congress. I remember I was, I had malaria back then. It was like a little, I wouldn't go. I said, nah, it's really, I had to go. So I went there, I got there. And after the Dev Congress, Kofi again. So Kofi, so let me tell you a little thing about Kofi. So I remember back in 20, yeah, it was 2021. Yeah, so back in 2021, like mid level back earlier 2021, I reached out to Kofi and I was like, Kofi, because Kofi's Kofi is a really intelligent dev, one of the most intelligent, smartest people you ever meet. I know because he used to beat me back in school a lot. He was like the only I, we were in separate classes. I was first in my class, Kofi was first in his class, and then we we got into the same class and go. Kofi started beating me like every single subject. Like the only thing I could beat was smart <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. So Kofi is really, I reached out to Kofi, I was like, Kofi, wouldn't you go to work at M Pharma? It's a really cool place. Like me, I had M Pharma in myself. I was like, because I've seen that they are looking for content. 
like ah okay i said oh yeah oh, oh, check out for the button ah so few months later could you reach out some few months later could reach out to me it's like i'm doing something i'll let you know when it solves few months later it tells me he started working at a farmer it's like this boy <laughs> Kofi was already worked. So we go to Dev Congress and then Kofi reach out to me. It was like I meet Kofi over there. So basically Kofi, we meet, he, he comes to us, he's coming, and then we meet over there. And then the CTO of M Pharma is there. So Kofi basically like, I'm going to introduce you to the CTO. Don't tell them that you are an intern or you're looking for just tell them you're a software engineer. So we went there and then he introduced me basically like, I oh, this is my, my friend. He's a software engineer, like Python Django and all that, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, nice, nice, nice. We can, like, he's looking, since, because that during that time, Enform was looking for jobs and all that. So it was like, okay, he's my friend. This, I was like, okay. So TTO tells Kofi that if she send me, um, if she send him my CV the, um, on Monday, I said, okay. I think the point is on Saturday. So okay. I am like, mm, oh, is there? I mean, I mean, I get my CV over there at first. So I come home and then I just basically brush up my CV. I update it and I send it to Kofi on um on the Sunday. So Kofi sends it on Monday. I don't hear from the right. And then I put it on Twitter one day about how I'm looking for a new job. So it was during the festive seasons, during the Christmas, I was like, everyone is in a good mood, so why not put it on Twitter that you're looking for a job? And I also, that was where I reached out to Gregory, the CEO of m -Pharma. If you have seen that LinkedIn, um, the Twitter post about the LinkedIn message I sent him, I was like, oh, he must be in a good mood. It's the festive season, who is not, who is not? So let me send him this real quick. <laughs> And I sent to him. So I put some Twitter and another dev who I work with right now, um, a very smart, and that's smart. I mean, everyone who works at m is smart. So he reaches out to me and is like, I think he's the one who gave me some confidence of, uh, because the way he worded it, it was like the back end team of m wants to talk to you. It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, they know me. Like, and I said to apply here, and I said, yeah, a link to apply. I was like, ah, <laughs> so no problem. I applied to the place. And then another guy also reached out to me who was, who used to work at m -Pharma. He wanted us to collaborate on something. So it was like, all these people, m -Pharma, m -Pharma, m -Pharma. maybe I have a chance to be at this place. Maybe I don't need to wait for a while to, before I, I go to, I, I don't need to work somewhere else before I get there. I know, so I applied. Mind you, I would already sent my listening to Kofi to send to the CEO. I didn't get to hear anything, CTO. So when I when I sent um, the CEO that thing message, he basically told me that I should send my um, my CV to um, the CTO, and he gave me the CTO's um, email. So I sent it again to him. So I've sent it twice, and I've also sent applied on the um, on the. Um, website so basically this is what should have seen my CV like five times by now they don't have they don't have a reason i think it was after the cto thing when i reached out to the ceo three days later i got a message i got a call from the governor santi um the chapter lead and he was like we received your um received your application and they are giving me a take home test so have this and we schedule an interview it's like yes okay at least i i'm getting my foot on the door i knew once i've got this place i i would ace whatever it is so i basically checked out the take home and it was basically what i've been doing in my internship what i got introduced to in my internship so if i hadn't done my internship i would have had some difficulties with it it was literally what i was taught when i like the things i learned during my internship API development, so I built that API. I had to dockerize it. I had no idea what Docker was. So I basically just put it and then figured out, copied and paste, and it worked. So yeah, I basically dockerized my project. And then I reached out to um, this guy, Oliver Bomber. 
I never had an opportunity to work with him. The, the month I started working at M Pharma was the same month he quit. So I basically reached out to him. I basically went on LinkedIn and then looked at the people who were there and I reached out to them like for some tips, like I'm applying there. I'll see you soon at work. Me, me and I have not done an interview. I was telling people I see them soon at work. So I was asking them for tips and stuff. So they gave me tips on some things like doing his own interview, um, how um, some of the questions he faced and all that. So I got those tips and my from my boss, which was the where I did my internship, he basically also took me and then he did um, a mock interview with me prior to the interview. So it was just, you will see that throughout this story, it was just, I had, I didn't do this alone. It wasn't any self-made nonsense. It was a lot of people just pitching in and a lot of people helping me on the way that I got to this place. So it was, I, it just saw us, we did an interview. I don't know if, I don't really know what, if I did really great at the interview, but I asked, answer the questions. And I think the beautiful thing about M Pharma, yeah, is how the culture, the culture over there is amazing, the engineering culture. So it even showed during the interview process. So the interview process wasn't like, uh, I ask you a question, you get it wrong, I'll note it down that you are wrong. You get straight down, note it down, you're right. It was an interactive um, interview. So it was, they asked me a question, I answer them. And if I miss something, okay, did you consider this? No. Okay. You could have considered this. This would do this and it will help this, this and that. So it was basically even during the interview process, there was learning pains from the other engineers. And after the interview process, right? So after we were done, I basically, it was during the questions where I had to ask questions. That was where I asked them. I asked them a lot of questions because I had, I was genuinely interested in the company. I didn't want to work there. So I knew I'd been following the company. So I knew a lot about them. So I was basically asking them, just trying to get an insight into what happens over there. I don't know how much of that went into the whole thing, but why I'm, I'm saying this was because the next interview that I had, what the CTO asked was, oh, you call me. Last time we met, you had some interesting questions. So I'm assuming that was kind of something you, remem you remembered me by. So. That's why I'm just saying it. But it was basically me just saying, it. okay, great. Um, I this is my opportunity to meet these devs. Let me ask as much questions as I can, right? And during that whole time also, I had um I was interviewing for another company. So after I did my first interview with Informa, uh, my sister basically sent my name to another company that we we're looking for the developers. So they reached out to me. I did an interview and basically, so M Pharma, the interview process was, it took a long time. So it was between December to February. So December, I started interviewing at M Pharma. In January, I started interviewing at M Pharma. December, I got the take home. January, I did my first interview. And then I had to do the interview at the other place. I wasn't really interested, but because my sister was, so I had to go through as formalities. So I went through their faces and then I did my second interview with M Pharma in, I think in January around there. It was, it was like the second interview wasn't even like long. It was basically, we started and it was like, oh, like I think I met the co-founder, Dan, Dan Shukimas. If, if I hope most of you get to work at M Pharma, you meet, he's very bubbly, he's a really great guy. So I basically met him, he asked me two questions that were like, I don't need to ask you any more questions. You have great answers to. So I want you to be part of the team. Did I? My head was swollen. I, 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 I pretended that my head wasn't. It was very okay, but I knew, yeah. But I had to keep a good face. I was like, oh, thank you. But inside my head, it was like, hooray. But yeah, it was just me. We afterwards, it was just. Uh, a lot of conversations between me and the city. We were just talking, we we're just discussing stuff and all that. So after the interview, I hadn't heard from Informa. I didn't hear from Informa for a long time after the second interview. So I had gone through like three um, interviews of the other places and I got an offer. 
So I got an offer. I haven't heard from it. From her. So what will I do? So I was like, let me reach out to CTO. So I basically reached out to him. It was, I had a bit of reservation because, you know, Ghanaian company, if you had said uh, you have, I, I didn't want it to come out like I was just um, strong hope arming them into getting me interview. So I basically was like, okay, great. Let me find a way. If the culture is as it is, then they will, they will allow me. So I basically yeah. reached out to CTO and I was like, since we last talked, this, 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 um, I've got to office. He was like, oh, I want you. So I'm sending your details to Human Capital. So they reach out to you. So that was it. Six days later, I get uh, to, um, I get an offer from my phone. That was one of the best days of my life. Basically, like I was, I remember sitting on the edge of my bed. I don't even remember what I was doing, but I was just on my phone and then I got the offer. It was just, it was surreal. Have you watched that? Um, you watched the scene in Pursuit of Happiness where it was meant to just pass into the crowd, how he was feeling? Was, until then, I had been seen as an abstractist sense, but this time I was, I was living it. it it was like the culmination of all things. The validation of all my efforts. And I've been climbing the mountains of Pugamachira for years and I was finally amazing. Yeah, but yeah, that was it. I thought I was the zenith of the mountain, but until I started working, I realized I didn't know a lot of stuff, so yeah. That was um, the aftermath in terms of when I started working at M Pharma. M Pharma is a really great place. The culture over there is amazing. You when you get there, a lot of people really, really are great. So we have software. Everyone is a software engineer. At first, it was everyone was a software engineer. And they had levels. If you ask someone what level they were in, they wouldn't be told. They would tell you. But right now, we have like senior software engineers and software engineers. But we are. There's, there's no, you don't have a lot of segregation where you can see, point out to yeah. Oh, this is a senior software engineer. Like everyone's voice, they want to hear your voice. Everyone's voice is so great to be heard. Intern, whatever. Intern even do code reviews and stuff, right? So everyone is, because once you're there, they know you have something that's really great. And that's why they, they, they employed you. So everyone is encouraged to be heard. And so I learned a lot of stuff at Informa. It, it was really, when I got there, I had, I even bent myself out. <laughs> My CTO talked to me like relax, small and stuff, right? So it was just crazy. But I had, after that, uh, it was just went through a learning phase. And that's when you realize, that's when I realized is after you get to your first job, the, the, the journey actually starts. That's why my last phase was the beginning. That is when the journey actually starts. You realize that. So that's one thing I want to tell you. Like, don't wait to learn. Like you are saying you want to learn to a certain point before you, st you start applying. Start applying for jobs right now. I think that's why it took me three years before I got to the future. My first job was because I wasn't applying for jobs earlier. Start applying for jobs right now. When you know a li little, you will learn a lot of stuff during the work process, when you start working, you will learn a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things that you you pick up when you start working, the tools that you use, but focus on fundamentals of computer programming. Just focus on the fundamentals. The tools you learn and stuff, you learn all on the job. You learn a lot of stuff on the job. So just focus on the fundamentals um, of computer engineering. I think for me, um, I had a, a phase where I, so I got to Informa. I'm like a junior engineer by then. I got there and due to certain circumstances, I become the only backend engineer in my team. And I'm still figuring out things. And I had to learn a lot during that time. And that was where it's during those principles that a lot of growth happened, right? So that was where a lot of growth happened for me. And it was like, they have put you in those water, you have to swim, but it's not like you can drown because there are a lot of the engineers, everyone is ready to help, right? In the, I think I told you this time, in the words of one of the greatest reasons, help will always be given out for God when you ask for it. So at M Pharma is the same. You always get help when you ask for it. Yeah, I have a lot of really smart people that I work with. And yeah, so basically I'm really honored and privileged to be at where I am. 
I'm learning a lot. And that's been my journey so far. I know it's quite boring. One thing you figure, you realize is um, I had a lot of help with, from people. And secondly, it is not that extraordinary. So it can be replicated. So yeah, that is it. That has been my journey so far. I hope I didn't bore you out today. But yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kwame, for sharing your journey. I think most of us can relate to some parts of it, like the struggling aspects and the confusion at a point, yes. Thank you very much for sharing with us. So there are a couple of questions in the chat. I'll read them out to you and address them for the participants. So Ike, Ike is asking, do you think that the hunger you had during your internship can be sustained for the duration of one software career? No, I don't think it 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 it, it would. I mean, it depends on you as a person, right? You don't have to. And that's the thing about you don't have to bank everything on emotions. So you have to learn to figure out that okay, this is an emotion. It will fade out after a while, but you also have to make conscious efforts of. I always have to learn new things and the excitement will come when you are learning new things right so you're trying to explore something new and then you can't figure it out it always always takes you back to that time back when you didn't know a lot but the most important thing at this moment you have a lot of context like it's easier to learn a lot of stuff now for me than it did when i was learning back then but back then it was a lot of, it took me a lot of years just hammering down the fundamentals. So I hammered down a lot of fundamentals. And then as I got to this point, learning tools becomes easier, right? So maintaining the hunger is just you trying to, you have to, you don't have to bank on the emotion that the hunger should be there. You have to make a conscious effort that, okay, I need to be better than I was yesterday. So I have this list, basically I have a list of things. So I have this um, database on Notion. Anytime I've, I've I hear about a new con concept or something new I want to learn, I just put it in the list. So once in a while I pick one and then I start working, learning about um, that concept. So once you have that, you can have a sustained, making a conscious effort to have a sustained understanding because it's a long journey. It never ends. It only ends. The thing about the per state of knowledge is it's perpetual. When you move from that state of unknown to the state of known, the state of known brings so many questions, it leads you back to the state of unknown. Is the never ending cycle only ends when you lose enthusiasm. So it all starts from you hung, ho, ho, holding on to that effort. Like I want to make a conscious effort. So in my that emotion might not be sustained, but you can make a conscious effort that yeah, I want to continuously learn. And that will basically give the same effect as the hunger that you you once had. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. I hope this answers your question. I so there's another one which says, is there a community where young people who are in tech, in the tech industry can get help from? I, I don't, yeah, basically tech Twitter, Ghanaian tech Twitter, right? I think you can reach out to a lot of people. Sometimes you might not get, people might not help, um, might not get you. Sometimes it's not that they don't want to, sometimes people are just too busy. So they never reach out. I try to, because of my experience, I try to always help anyone who comes to my DM as much as I can, right? But I think one thing you also need to, when you are going, I think people go with, I want you to be my mentor and all that. Don't 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 worry about, don't go with that. If you pick someone and you, you idolize the person and want to the person to mentor you, you don't go to the, like, I want you to be my mentor. Wait, when you get an issue, a problem, go to the person with that specific problem. I... I'm doing this, I'm building this, I'm having this error. Don't end it there. I've tried this, I've tried that, but it's still prevalent. So what do I do? This, first of all, you have come to the person with a specific issue. You have told him the things you have solved, which shows that you have you were also, you have taken initiative to solve the problem. You have Googled, you have made your own, um, um, taking your own initiatives. And then after that, they also know that, okay, I can rule out this and this because it didn't solve the problem. So they can now focus on can basically, and that's the thing with um, seizing um, developers, engineers, they can just, based on the things you have done, based on the things you have, they can just say, okay, do this, it will solve it. 
right? But you don't need to go, I want you to be my mentor and this, this. They might not mind you. Yeah. Just wait. And you have a lot of people, just reach out to them when you need help. That's all. So on tech Twitter, just figure out, I'm um, joining the developers, the Ghanaian developers, figure out who, which people you want to model, then just follow them when you need help. There's Chrissy Dustin, there's, um, who again? I think there, there are a lot of, I don't remember the US, Derry, Chrissy Dustin, we have Jerry, we have Jerry, yep. You have Jerry, you have Ben, you have, uh, you have a lot of really smart um, developers, so just reach out to them. Um, if 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 you are having mobile, you should go to Isaac. Hey, Abris, that uh, go to that guy. He's very he's very very smart. So yeah, that's it. All right, thank you. So Tim also wants to know what advice you would give someone who just got their first real job as a software developer. So if you got your first job as a software engineer, right? You have to first understand. I think it also comes back to sometimes people having like imposter syndrome. You have to first understand, right? The things you learned when you were learning is this when you get a job is in a whole different um terrain, right? You are into a new place where you are not just building for yourself or personal projects. You are thinking about extensibility, maintainability, how scalable your code will be when you start building. So like you have a lot of things you have to think about when you're just writing code. So something that it should be able to take you like five minutes to write. Now it's taking you like a day or two, right? Just understand that this is, there's a lot of things that I don't know. And I'm here to learn a lot of stuff. Ask questions, a lot of questions earlier. You want to ask um, a lot of dumb questions earlier when you started working at place because everyone expects you not to know this stuff until other, and instead of waiting for like a year or two after you've been there and then you start asking those questions, right? So ask a lot of dumb questions, ask a lot of questions. Don't think it's dumb or anything. You don't know something, ask. Even if you know, ask. Don't go and tell them that, oh, I saw this and I saw that, um, but I can do it this way. When you go and meet a code base and it's, quite like you are not quite familiar or you think is you can do better first ask um i saw this code base given the is there a reason why we did this and that they'll tell you why you realize that the reason why you thought it was that it was actually the perfect reason so when you start understand that this is where i'm about to learn so you meet a lot of things that you don't know and you think that all the time like you are you are, you are not smart at all and that's where the imposter syndrome um, comes in, right? But it's just understanding that, yeah, I'm not really rich, right? Okay. If you understand really rich, you understand that what you think is imposter syndrome is not really imposter. It's just that you don't know. It's not like a lot and you have like, yeah. So it's just understand that and then realize that, okay, I have a lot to learn. Be humble in that regard and then take time and learn. And be careful not to burn out because it is harder to come recover when you burn out. So take time, learn during the process, take time, do some personal learning, but also take time to rest. So yeah, it's when you start your journey, when you start to get your first job, try to make an impact, learn a lot of stuff, learn about the how things are doing. Maybe you cannot learn like code base in terms of you take this repo and then but then in terms of context so if it's like a process um an order creation process or a sign up with creation process you learn the flow now how you traverse between multiple services and things but just learn and then relax be humble in that aspect and then just try and be hungry and figure out things yeah but you you just you do yeah all right so Tim still also wants to know the pay range for an intern in Ghana. I think I'm also interested in that question. <laughs> for an intern in Ghana? Yeah. I don't know what the pay range, I didn't get a job as an intern, I got as a software engineer, but the pay range for an intern in Ghana, I can't really tell. I think I, I do my time, for my pay range was 1,000. I got, I was taking 1,000, but it was a part-time job. It was a part-time job, yeah, so yeah. That's all basically right. It. all right. So I want to know how would you advise what advice would you give to us beginners on how to handle rejections? 
Okay, so just when it comes to rejection, is right. Um, you need to first realize that okay. Before I sent it, I was unemployed, and after I sent in the rejected, I was unemployed. I'm unemployed. Nothing has changed, right? So it's basically have you are in the same state, but at least when you send out that application, you have a certain chance of getting employed. So don't let that fear of rejection hold you back. Just understand that before I send this, I'm in a state where whether I send or not, I'm still in that state. If they reject, I'm still in that state. Nothing has changed. So before I send them, when they rejected, nothing has changed. But at least after when I send it, I have that potential. I have that. Um, there's that chance of me getting a job. So in terms of handling rejection, see it as a form of like the process. When you get a rejection, look back and think, um, okay, maybe during the interview process, is there something I didn't know? Especially when you're doing interview, and then maybe there are things you don't know. Note them down, and then when you when you when you're on your own, just learn them. So it's so, and the thing about start. That's why I say start applying right now, right? Even when you are learning, you have a lot of experiences during the interview process, and most of the questions they ask are similar. So you have a lot of experience during the process, so that when you are finally ready, when you get there, you would have, you would be really good at the interview. So don't look at rejection as just look at rejection as part of the journey. The state I was in before I got rejected is still the same state. But if I put this out there and I apply, I have, um, I have. If it's a ten percent chance of being employed, there's better chances than not actually applying. So yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. So we have five minutes more. So we'll take one more question. So if one wants to find out what does your job entail on a daily basis? So on a daily basis, on a daily basis, um, so we have kind of like something we call spring planning. So every two weeks we we have like a time that a couple of things we want to accomplish, but in two weeks. So during that two weeks, we basically plan how we are going to accomplish and then we break down to mini tasks and then we assign those tasks. So you have like tasks on your board. So on a daily, basically my day is mostly um meeting up. We, we start the day with a meeting where we update people on the tickets that we have um we are working on. The task that we are working on, well, um, what is the update, what is, and if there's any challenges you're having or there are any blockers or there are any other stakeholders or people that are involved that you have to interact with before you can keep, um, complete your task, then everyone is updated. But so on a daily basis, I basically pick up like a task on my board and then I have this um, app called Tick Tick. So I basically take all the tasks that I have to work on and then I put them in like a to-do list. And I just start working on it and check them out. So that's how most of my day is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. I realized I skipped the question that appeared twice. So let me just take that. So <laughs> what advice do you have for people who do not know what to do now? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's very disheartening when you don't know what to do now. It's one thing knowing what you want to do. And this time you have a goal on a time. But when you don't know what you want to do, there's kind of like you are in this boat where the wind is basically blowing into in every direction. You don't really know where you are going or you don't have a skill in mind. So it's just during that process, I always advise that people should accumulate knowledge and explore. So try and learn as much as you can because it will be very important. Most of the things I learned that in terms of problem solving, I did a I think I learned um, um, things about learning problem solving and all that. And they were they are all instrumental in my job. So some things I learned like writing how when I, I, I used to write a lot, so learn how to write. It has um, applied in my technical documents, which I write mostly during um during at when whilst I work. So just accumulate knowledge and explore a lot of stuff, something will click. And when it clicks, finally you have like a goal and then narrow down to that and then move on. I think um, in terms of software engineering, I think one thing I want to say really quick that software engineering is not just about coding. So learn problem solving. In terms of the whole um, imposter syndrome, I think one of the things I've realized is 
it's, it's more about people not knowing how to solve problems. That's the issue they have. It's not that they don't know how to code. If you give them, so when I was an intern, my boss would sit me down. He tell me, he, would, he doesn't tell me what you are going to do. So he tell me, okay, I want you to build this. You have to build a model which has this ID. It has this attribute. It has this, um, the attribute is a child field. This is a bar chart. This is an ID. This is an integer. This is an image. And then come and build a serializer. This, 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 and build a view. This, this, this. So he held my hand basically telling me, and then I just implement. But when you get to like please like Envoma, when I moved from the internship to junior, now it's more like no one is really first when I got to junior and junior as a software engineer in Envoma, they will give a task and then the senior software engineers will break into what needs to be done and then you execute it. But this time they're not going in detail like how to write a serializer, how to write JP and stuff, right? And as you move along and you increase, you realize that your changes come with the problems you can solve. So now the problems are more abstracted. Now the PM is telling me our users want this, build it. Right. So now you have to figure out, think about how to solve the problem and then put it into a document, put it out there, let other con the, um, engineers contribute and stuff. And before you start building, so most of the issue now is problem solving in terms of right now you have gotten to a place where we are most of, especially when you are working at startups and many places like small places where it's not really, um, you have most of the things will be, oh, we have this issue, build it. And you have an intern that you don't know a lot, a lot of things. So you have always been held during your tutorials. You write this model, you do this. You don't really think about logic much. But now they are telling you to solve a problem. So if possible, figure out, learn about problem solving. Like if you can basically pick up a course in terms of problem solving, how to think logically and stuff, just learn about them. It will really be very instrumental in your business. So that is one thing I just want to let people know. All right. Thank you very much, Kwame, for your time. So Jerry would wrap up the session. Yeah. Thank you, Alkaris. Thank you, Kwame. It's been very nice getting to know about your journey. And I know this is not the end. There's pretty much a lot to come, right? So before we wrap up, I, I think I'd, I'd want you to um, put in the chat how some of the attendees can reach you on social media platforms. And I think yeah, for anyone who'd be interested in wanting to speak to you further, they could always easily reach out to you, right? So um, thank you everyone once again for joining. We are very happy you made the time to speak to us or to listen to Pamela's journey. Hopefully um, we come up with a more interactive session. I think we are looking forward to organizing an in-person one where I'll be sure to drag Pamela along so you can meet him in person and uh, force him to listen to your, your piece of wanting him to mentor you, right? And, so yeah, I'd, I'd do want to have other professionals on the board from our partnership with M Pharma and the subsequent um, partnerships we are looking for to secure. So hopefully we can meet some other time. We can talk about some more interesting stuff and we can get to network, socialize and get to meet each other, right? So um, I think this is a very good start for Python Accra and I'm looking forward to our next event, which is which would be communicated to everyone that attended this event through your emails. So thank you guys very much for the time to join. Thank you so much, Kwame. Thank you, Karis, and thank have you. a wonderful day. Yeah. Hi. Everyone for coming. I really appreciate it. Hi. Bye. Bye.